What's up, Acolyte Squad? My name is Prince, and I'm an urban acolyte coming to you guys off the dome from Jom Tien Beach, Thailand. This video, I want to talk about possible Jedi who could show up in the Mandalorian to train baby Grogu. Be Jeezy. Hey, if you're new here, hey, I'm not an inside source guy. I don't, I'm not a Star Wars expert. I'm just a dude with a degree in religion. I grew up watching Star Wars and I like Chinese Kung Fu. So that gives me a bit of an interesting angle when it comes to uh, talking about Star Wars and breaking it down from uh, the standpoint of a theologian and a martial arts student. So let's dive in. All right. So I got this idea um, initially from a post that I saw over on Twitter. Uh, let me let me switch cameras because I'm not going to edit this. Wait a minute. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. There we go. All right. So uh, this person, Megan, at blog full of words, uh, tweeted out the other day. What if Luke, Ahsoka and Cal Kestis all end up founding different Jedi academies that end up like rival martial arts schools? Now, the first thing me like, that's why I started this off for people who might be new to my channel, new to me or just have been watching but didn't know much about my background. Naturally, uh, I got interested in this because uh the mention of rival martial arts schools. And I'm seeing here on uh, Megan's little uh, by line, it's a uh, byline. It says you will find that you cannot escape from this uh, research station writer. She, her bylines at Star Wars, at Star Wars Insider. So this person, like I, I've said in, in previous videos, the people that I mainly follow on uh, Twitter usually are people who write for Star Wars Insider magazine. So when I say, oh, this person, there's this outrage on Twitter and people are like, well, I didn't see that. It's because you're not following. It, all that means is you don't see what I see in my feed. I mainly follow uh, the people who are actual Star Wars insiders, like they write for Star Wars Insider magazine. If you didn't know that Star Wars has a magazine, well, I think I've said it three times now. Star Wars Insider magazine. Right. I used to have a subscription. Um, I don't. I think uh, I let it lapse when I came to Thailand because I wasn't reading uh, the digital ones and the, I'm not going to get them in the mail here in Asia at all. So you can cancel that. But anyway, I jumped on this this idea, the rival martial arts schools, because uh, I didn't like that word. That's what initially stood out to me because I saw this when I first woke up. As you see, it got posted 434 a.m. Uh, my time here in Thailand. Right. Uh, but think about this. Right. Especially, you know, the way I talk about the Jedi as being like the equivalent of an esoteric, um, an esoteric branch of Buddhism, uh, of uh, a Taoist Nagong school and Taoism. Right. In, in a lot of lineages, a lot of schools, they trace their line back to the eight Taoist immortals. So think about it like this. There was a master. That master had eight students, eight star students. They became Taoist immortals. This would be like if you had a Jedi master from the old Republic, let's say, and something happened back then. There were many Jedi, many Sith. And uh, these th this person had eight Padawan learners under them uh, during their their tenure as a uh, Jedi master. Maybe they were like Yoda species. I know uh, my man uh, Manny plays a lot of uh, Star Wars Old Republic. He's got a Star Wars Old Republic channel on YouTube. Manny, um, shout your uh, channel out in the comments when you see this video. And I know uh, it'll get flagged as spam, but I'll go ahead and uh, and approve that uh, when I see the comment. Uh, so people can uh, can can holler at your uh, your Star Wars Old Republic channel or you can check out uh, Soda Swotarista. She calls the game Sator, but it's Swotarista. She's got a great Star Wars Old Republic channel. If you want to know about more about the MMO game, uh, of course, you know, it's not exactly canon, but I mean, the Jedi's homeworld on there is Tython, which is, you know, ties directly into the Mandalorian is uh, Din Djarin is taking Grogu to Tython to hopefully attract 
uh, Jedi Master, which is the topic of this this uh, off the dome talk. Right. But anyway, back to this idea, these eight Taoist immortals. So let's let's put this. I'm going to describe this in Star Wars terms. So there was a, a Jedi Master Yoda species. They live a very long time. So this person has had time to be a Jedi Master to many to have many, many Padawan learners under them. And out of all of the different people to learn under them, there were eight who go on to become force ghosts because the Taoist immortal, uh, I, I said this on Twitter. Um, let me, let me, uh, cause I, I'm probably not going to come back to that, but, uh, Sanders presents was a guy who was doing a lot of, uh, where is it? Uh, I know I sent it out earlier today. Uh, be funny if he, there it is. Uh, so yeah, Greg Sanders earlier said, does that mean the old folk tale about no human force ghosts because China doesn't like ghosts wasn't something in force. I'd love to have that silliness finally put to bed. And I said, the whole idea of force ghosts comes from Taoism, right? There's a line in the Tao Te Ching uh, depending on how you translate it, uh, translate the English translation says those who preserve their sinner endure. Uh, I think most English translations just simply say uh, uh, they who keep their center maintain or something like that. Right. Uh, those who preserve their center endure the center of uh, the center of the body uh, being where the uh, the lower Dantian is. Right. We call that the center of the body in some school, Nagong schools. They say if you fill the Dantian with chi uh, and you cultivate it to a high level of development, um, their their theological belief is that you will retain your consciousness beyond death and you can continue to train. Right. You can continue to train and and, and build up more chi and, uh, you know, reach uh, the highest level of attainment and, you know, open all your chakras and become fully, a fully, uh, enlightened, a fully awakened, uh, a real, right. They say until you fill your Dantian with Chi to like a certain level of, of, until you fill it to a certain level, that's when you become a real person is what they, uh, call a real person. At that point, you, when you die, you can become a force ghost. I'm not making this up. This is, this is, as a matter of fact, the person, uh, who all of this came from, uh, uh, Pat John, uh, was a guy in, in a Chinese Indonesian. He died in, uh, February. Um, and I was, if we hadn't had all that Rona stuff happen, I was hoping to try to meet him, uh, in Indonesia over the summer, but you know, there's no travel and, and that stuff didn't happen. I got him fresh on my mind because he had out of, I know there's some Mopi fanboys or alleged Mopi students who follow my channel. Um, I don't know like how legitimate you guys are. If you just found Jim McMillan stuff online and now you're, yeah, I'm a Mopi student, but Costas told me that there was one American student who never got sick and they didn't want to be in the, in the limelight or anything. And that guy just appeared last week. Uh, still don't know his name, but uh, another Taoist Nagong school that that I know of, that I'm actually a student of. Uh, that guy reached out to someone who who uh, I had turned to for help, basically to 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 help me remember all the stuff that I forgot. Right. And now they're they're friends and they're they've been comparing notes, which gets back to this idea of rival martial arts schools. So back to the idea that there were these eight other Jedi who studied under somebody like Yoda and they go out and maybe they leave the order or the or, or the Jedi order wasn't because we know uh, in canon that uh when I don't want to call it the new Republic because that refers to like Luke Skywalker, Leia, all of that. Um, before the, the Republic as we know it, right. The high Republic, all of that, the Republic that emerged after, um, the Sith empire went away and, and Darth Bane started his order rule of two order of Sith that marked, uh, a new Republic, right. 
that, that we that you can kind of call the old republic because it went away, but not the old, old republic. Right. But when the Jedi got rid of the Sith, then they started to get more strict. Uh, you know, then they started to be more involved with the Republic and the government and the bureaucracy and and all of that stuff. Right. So before then, and we learned this in the. Uh, the uh, it, it started out as an audio, but Jedi lost right the book about Dooku and, and Dooku from the time he was a Padawan all the way up until uh, how he left the Jedi order. And, you know, right before he, you know, meets Darth Sidious and becomes a dark lord of the Sith. Right. Uh, but we learned that at one time from that book and uh, uh, what's the, the Qui-Gon book, Master and Apprentice kind of follows. It's kind of a sequel to the Jedi Lost book, which they both came out around the same time last year. But we learned that, like, the Jedi Order was a lot different previously. And that's where I'm going with this is that. You could have had these other Jedi who just went off and they did their own thing. They had their own way of teaching, but they all reached a high level of attainment. They all went on to become force ghosts. Right. And that doesn't necessarily mean they were rival schools or rival teachings. It just means that they they went their own way. They all had the same teacher initially, but then they branched off. Same thing with like Ip Man Wing Chun. You got all these different people. These different flavors of Wing Chun just under the one branch, Ip Man. They all trace their lineage back to Ip Man, Bruce Lee's teacher, right? Uh, you got like Chu Shang Din, uh, the guys that came in. They were uh, Ip's first students when he first came to Hong Kong. Then allegedly when Ip Man was in Foshan, before he left the mainland, when J Japan came in and invaded China and he lost all his, his money and everything else. Uh, and separate kind of separated from his wife, sort of. She stayed on the mainland, but he came to Hong Kong. Yes, I know that's not in the Donnie Yen movies, but that's what really happened. Right. That's why I said the Donnie Yen Ip Man movies aren't actually uh, they aren't actually they're They're very entertainment because it's Donnie Yen. Right. And they poured a lot of money into them, but they're not historically accurate. Right. But. Uh, the people who were Ip's first students their Wing Chun is different from uh, William Chung, right? Uh, Wong Chung Lung, who was supposed to have been like Ip's best fighter, one of his best students. Like Wong Chung Lung's Wing Chun is different from Bruce Lee's uh, Wing Chun that, that Bruce Lee brought over to America because like Bruce Lee didn't. Well, first off. William Chung and uh, and Wong Chung Lung were Bruce Lee's senior brothers. They were the ones who were actually teaching him because it wasn't doing a lot of teaching. That's just the way it is. Right. The teacher has a bunch of people. You're new. All right. You're going to work with them. Right. So they were the ones who were actually teaching him, even though it it was his Sifu. Right. But like Bruce Lee, in his case, he didn't get the full curriculum. A lot of people didn't get the full Wing Chun curriculum. They go and train with Ip two years, three years, four years, maybe five years and leave. Right. I started out studying Wing Chun, Kung Fu, uh, Ho Kim Min lineage. Uh, Grandmaster Ho spent 20 years training with Ip, man. He was one of Ip's oldest students when he first came to him when he started teaching the restaurants union. Right. So Ho Kim Ming, like his big thing was I haven't changed anything from from Grandmaster Ip. And as a matter of fact, Grandmaster Ip had a school in in Macau and Grandmaster Ho was the person who was uh, leading that school. And Ip would come out occasionally teach classes. My teacher, uh, Renee Ong, uh, uh, Randy, Randy Lee, rest in peace. He passed, uh, uh, at the end of the summer, I believe. Um, and, uh, Augustine Fong, who is like Ho Kim Ming's, uh, most famous student, probably one of the more famous Wing Chun teachers in America, right? Located in Tucson, Arizona. A lot of, I meet a lot of Wing Chun people who fall under Augustine Fong, but then Augustine, he studied Choi Le Foot. Uh, Kung Fu before Wing Chun. So he added the Choi Le foot kicks to that. Right. So where I'm going with this is they're not necessarily rival schools. It's just you have these different people, these different people who who add their own flavor 
to the initial teachings and you can still reach a high level of attainment. And there's not really a rivalry. It's just it is what it is. You know, I'm going to do my own spin on this. You do your own spin on it and we're all cool. And maybe, you know, it, it, when you're out in the wilds and we're talking about Jedi and, and Star Wars, it's a big universe out there. People could be acting independently and just not be aware that there are other people out there, depending on where they are. If they're in wild space, the unknown regions, somebody's operating within the Republic. Somebody's operating on some remote, remote planet, and they're very secluded and cut off from everything else going on. And that brings us to uh, one of the articles that uh, that actually kind of deals with this. This comes from uh, uh, CBR.com. And as I after I looked at this, I realized that CBR.com a lot of these people that write for these like big websites, uh, sometimes they they uh, are not the best sources for this stuff. And that's I'm sure that well, I'd, I'm sure I'd like to be optimistic and say that, hey, man, the people who are writing for these places are dissecting Star Wars, paying attention to everything. But they have multiple people writing stuff. Um, but I'm saying that because I've seen just looking looking for this information before I turned on the camera and hopped on here, I found an article from a few months back that contradicts this. Right. But uh, they said, you know, this is recent. Twenty one hours ago, uh, seven Jedi who could train Baby Yoda. Right. And so, of course, they've got Jedi Fallen Orders, Cal Kestis. Cal Kestis is a Jedi that was just introduced added to the canon last year in the Jedi Fallen Order video game, right? Cal Kestis uh, started out as a, he, 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 he's a little bit younger than, uh, well, actually, I started, I say he's a little bit younger than Kanan, right? But actually, he, he should be around the same age as Kanan Jarrus, uh, maybe older. They make him look really young when he's uh, a Padawan with a master. But uh, in the Jedi Temple, you have a trial. Um, you're a youngling, then you have to undergo a trial. And when you pass that trial, then you were assigned a Jedi Master. You graduate to the rank of Padawan, right? So Cal Kestis was already at the rank of Padawan. Uh, actually, no, he could be younger than Kanan because Kanan was kind of like, they say Obi-Wan was where he was older and there was like this issue with nobody wanted to, uh, to, to take on Kanan or Caleb, Caleb doom is his real name. Uh, if you don't didn't watch rebels, uh, because he asked questions all the time. So they've like ret they've done a lot of stuff to retcon, uh, Caleb or Kanan Jarrus back into, uh, into the prequel era, right? Like the idea for Obi-Wan to send out the distress signal. The signal was called recalling Jedi back to the Jedi temple when order 66 went down. So they come back and then, you know, Anakin and the 501st would kill them. Uh, but, uh, Obi-Wan sent it out and that, and they retconned it where that idea came from Caleb because he asked, well, what if something bad happens at the temple and the, and, uh, the distress signal calls everybody back, right? It's, we could, could, could they use it as a warning to tell them to stay away? So Obi-Wan got the idea from, from Kane and Jairus or Caleb Doom to do that, right? So Cal is, is like around, let, we'll just say he's a few years younger than Kanan, right? And we see him, you know, he's a, a older teenager or, or a young adult. I'd like to place him. He's like around Ezra Bridger's age in, in the final season of Star Wars Rebels when, when we see him in Fallen Order, right? But, uh, Cal is, is starts out his adventure with Siri with the intentions of we're going to rebuild the Jedi order. He's going to reconnect with the force and train himself up. Uh, you know, remember what he lost, right. And, uh, he's going to make him, he's going to knight himself and, and figure it out, you know, by the jumping into the fire. Right. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the same way, uh, Kane and Jairus, you know, became a Jedi knight. I, and he spent most of rebels, the first two seasons, feeling unworthy and then you know and then yoda had to reach out to him through the force the world between worlds and let him know hey man you 
you got it. You know, you, you even if you don't feel like you got it, you're it. You you know, you're in the driver's seat. It's up to you. Right. And then, you know, since I mentioned the Rebels connection, then Ezra Bridger. Right. The last time we saw Ezra Bridger uh, was when he took Thrawn out of the game plan, uh, along with Thrawn's uh, ship, the Chimera uh, with Thrawn and I mean, right now, Ahsoka Tano is looking for Ezra. So I'm going to say it's a possibility for Cal Kestis. Well, we don't know what what he's doing, what he's up to. If he survives, where could he be? If there's a Fallen Order 2 game and I hear there is going to be a sequel, that could actually answer the question of, well, where is where was Cal Kestis during the rebellion? Right. That the fact that Luke Skywalker is believed to be the only Jedi. Why is that? Where is Cal Kestis if he if he's still alive? Ezra Bridger, we know why he, he's off the map. Right. No one knows where he is. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say a no to Ezra Bridger because. Right now, Ahsoka's looking for him. Right. She's looking for. Grand Admiral Thrawn, she's on the quest to find Ezra Bridger. Like I said in yesterday's video with uh, Rosario Dawson at the end, Dave Filoni says, look, man, the epilogue to Star Wars Rebels, that could that could have happened after uh, we see Ahsoka in the Mandalorian in the most recent episode, the Jedi. Right. Um, I kind of thought that I, 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 well, I don't, I, I kind of thought it, uh, but, uh, I, I kept I know I raised the question at least once about when is this happening? Is it possible that when we see Ahsoka uh, show up on Lothal to get Sabine, like, is that after all of this has happened? Right. We, we don't know where that falls on the timeline. Right. So Luke Skywalker, also a possibility. Here's a problem. Right. Everybody wants to see Luke Skywalker. You know, I've seen Boss Logic make a you know, uh, graphic and, uh, Charlie over to emergency. Awesome. Uh, put that in the thumbnail, everybody. Oh, we're going to see Luke Skywalker. They should get Sebastian Stan, uh, to be Luke Skywalker. We're going to see Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian. Here's the thing. We kind of know what Luke Skywalker's doing. That's what, and I'm just going off of what, what is actually in Canon Luke and what Luke says, right? Luke has lived a private life. Uh, he's retracing uh, the Jedi and exploring new ways of understanding the force that's in the legends of Luke Skywalker. Luke has been known to pop up, you know, here and there, he, like he popped up in Battlefront 2, um, you know, as as they're in the middle of Operation Cinder. First, he, you know, was in the comic book with Poe Dameron's mother. <laughs> Excuse me, getting the Uniti tree or the Force tree. Then he shows up with uh was Adele, right, from Inferno Squad on that uh that one planet where Palpatine had a a kind of a uh storage house and I think Dell was supposed to get rid of everything there. Luke Skywalker goes, saves him, gets the compass, which helps him find uh the the Jedi, you know, the first Jedi temple. Right. Luke Skywalker used that compass uh, because you had to use the force to navigate the hyper lanes. Right. Naturally, that's if you want to find a Jedi secret, you need to find a Jedi super secret compass and use the force to find the Jedi secret. Right. So the people, well, why did Luke Skywalker leave a way to find himself if he wanted to be hidden? He didn't. Somebody else found that. Right. Luke Skywalker didn't leave breadcrumbs. This ain't Hansel and Gretel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened. Right. Luke, Luke used that compass and he didn't take R2 with him, um, you know, and, and he got in his X wing and used the compass and used the force, found his way to the planet in uh, Octo. And uh, and that's that's what happened. Right. So, you know, yes, Luke, the, 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 here's the thing. We don't know when Luke Skywalker took on Ben Solo. And I'm under the impression that Ben Solo was his first student. And then when he had been, then they kind of traveled around and then it was like, all right, uh, we need to settle down and I'm going to take on more students. Right. I think it was just Luke and Ben for a hot minute. We don't know when Ben started training with Luke. And then when Luke opened up, you know, his, his little Jedi temple to everyone else. Um, prior to that, 
we were under the assumption that it was only Luke and Ben, right? That's what Bloodline made it sound like. And that was five years before The Force Awakens. So Leia doesn't even know what Luke is doing. Why would everyone else know? So I'm I know this is going to make some people mad, but hey, man, I can't. I, feelings and facts, man, you, you, you got to separate your feelings from the facts. The facts as we as they stand right now is that Luke didn't take on any students until he started training Ben and Luke was out traversing the galaxy, meeting other other force sensitive people uh, and, and understanding other religions related to the force. That did happen. He met uh, he met some force mystics who predated the Jedi Order. Right. If you don't know, you know, find somebody who talked about the legends of Luke Skywalker. Read the book, get the audio book. Hey, man, I got a link to my audible. You can click that. I think you get like one free download or a free month of audible or something. I don't know how it works, uh, but you can click it and get the legends of Luke Skywalker. Listen to it. I re actually read it. Um, and, but uh, if you've never listened to a Star Wars audio book, they are excellent right they have all the sound effects and everything else from the movies uh they usually have the same uh voice actors unless it's somebody famous like you know like uh janina Gavincar did uh the battle for inferno squadron because she was actually i versio in the game right every now and then they'll have somebody like that but usually uh they'll have like the same small group of people who do all the different voices and they're it's great Right. So I guess that's a plug from Audible. And I guess I have to tell you, if you do that, uh, that's an affiliate thing. So I get a kickback from it. But uh, I don't I don't even know if my affiliate links even work anymore for for Audible because I haven't been talking about any of that stuff. Right. Or you can click the Amazon thing, go to my Amazon store and uh, and get the books, too. And I get a little something from Amazon. Right. Which I probably use to buy. Uh, more books or something as research for this channel right now Quinlan Voss is an interesting one right so Quinlan Voss if you had asked me who would I think would be the perfect person to show up on Tython and answer the call because Quinlan Voss we have no idea where he is um, now I just I was getting ready to show you guys something that Quinlan Voss was originally supposed to die in order 66 order 66 was supposed to have been much more graphic in revenge of the sith but uh george lucas the studio execs were worried about if they made order 66 too graphic it would have affected the rating of revenge of the sith it was already pg-13 they didn't want to flirt with a rated r rating because hey star wars is for kids right uh so you know yeah i'm sure some of you would have liked for it to have been graphic and it been rated R and you seeing people getting, you know, filled with laser holes and everything else. But Star Wars is for kids. Right. So, you know, we they, it may have been a good thing that that happened because now there's more things you can do with the story, like uh, the possibility of Quinlan Voss surviving. We have no idea where this dude is. What he's doing, the last we know of him in canon was, uh, you know, the mission that he did with uh, Asajj Ventress, where the Jedi sent him to assassinate Count Dooku. That didn't work out. Dooku turned him to the dark side. And for uh, a few months, Quinlan Voss was serving the CIS. He was he was serving. You know, he was fighting for the other team under a, a, a dark side, like he literally turned to the dark side and then he was able to, you know, hide himself and go back to the Jedi order. And then he went back to Dooku and leaked all the Jedi's like intel to Dooku and to the droid army. Right. So uh, but uh, it was the act of Asajj Ventress sacrificing herself to save her love because Gwendolyn Voss and Asajj Ventress. Hey, man, I, I don't remember the details, but I'm pretty sure he smashed that. I, I'm I, I, I'm pretty sure she was trying to she was trying to, trying to pull the dreads out of his head, man. I'm talking about all them times when people were frustrated and wanted a wanted a size of interest to get her butt beaten in the Clone Wars. I think Quinlan Voss, hey, he took his he, he took his other lightsaber and, and, and took all of that out on her. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Quinlan Voss is an interesting character, right? Because uh, up until, you know, and up until Rail Avaros uh, gave us a little details of, you know, it's OK for Jedi to, to, to do what they do. Right. We, we were under the impression that Quinlan Voss and Anakin were the only uh were the uh, the only Jedi who weren't you know exactly virgins, right? Um, you know, but now I'm thinking uh, Obi Wan probably smashed uh, uh, Duchess Satine, and uh, you know Jedi might have been getting down and dirty. Well, uh, you know Qui Gon was asking about who was Anakin's father because that that was kind of occluded. Hey man. It's okay for Jedi to do what they do. They just can't form attachments and the whole them having a family would be an obvious attachment that, you know, could could affect their decision making. Right. Um, so Quinlan Voss would be, a, a you know, given his experience with the dark side, having fallen to the dark side, having experienced the night sister magic, having formed an attachment and a romantic relationship with uh, with the Saj Ventress. Uh, and then just the way he was kind of this cowboy rogue Jedi, um, you know, going undercover, he would be perfect to. He would be the perfect person to be able to 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 last without the Jedi order because of the nature of what he was doing. Because, like I said, this cowboy Jedi who was always undercover, um, you know, he was undercover there on Tatooine when uh, uh, Obi-Wan and. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn were there, you know, with Padme and they ended up finding Anakin. Quinlan Voss was just there chilling out like, hey, what's up, dog? You know, I'm at a cantina. I'm sipping me a desert margarita. You know, I, I, I'm in the cut. I'm so in the cut that y'all didn't even know I was a Jedi till they made me one. <laughs> so, I mean, he would be a perfect person to be able to fly under the radar during all the dark time, the rebellion, maybe he joined some little militia and uh, and I got the impression that because of his undercover work and the nature of it, he would be he would be one who would be more than able to survive and and not not use his force abilities and whatnot. Right. To, to be able to conceal that. Now, these other ones, I'm not so sure about Heir to the Empire's Mara Jade. George Lucas hated Mara Jade character. Um, I have uh, in my old plans for the channel, I had a video about how Mara Jade could be in introduced into the canon. I don't want to blow my load right now, but I'm going to say no to this because I don't see Mara Jade mentoring Grogu the way they're talking about. I think Mara Jade could become canon eventually, but it's not going to be the Mara Jade who was the emperor's hand, basically an inquisitor or a spy working for the emperor. Uh, if that were the case, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be running around lightsaber and whatnot. Um, you know, the way she was supposed to, I guess she was supposed to help assassinate Luke Skywalker or whatever. And then, uh, they end up, you know, through the, the Thrawn, the Timothy Zahn Thrawn trilogy, uh, she ends up, going from I'm supposed to kill Luke Skywalker and then I want revenge on Luke Skywalker for getting rid of the for, you know, ruining the empire and ruining my life to, you know, now we're making babies and we're married until uh till uh the first version of Kylo Ren uh killed her. All right. I think that's what happened. And then this other one, Jedi Knights Kyle Katarn. Uh you guys know what I've been uh what I've said is that, you know, Kyle Katarn uh, is Finn, right? Finn is is the canon Kyle Katarn. They've got a similar backstory. Uh, I talked about it years ago, like back in 2016, and then another Off the Dome video where I talked about what Finn's ongoing story could be. And I was like, I'd like him to have a solo adventure. You know, yeah, of course, Poe and, and Ray would play a part in that. But for it to large for the book to really be this is Finn's story. Now, I know some people are like, but Prince, you should still have Poe and, 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 and Finn as a duo. No, fuck that. Right. It's Finn's story. Poe can show up, help out from time to time. But this is Finn's story. Right. That because uh, and I said that because last year, this time. um, What's his name? 
Oh, I just forgot his name. He's written so many. He wrote the, the novelization to The Last Jedi. I can't remember his name off the top of my head and I don't feel like looking on Twitter. Right. But he 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 released a tweet that he quickly deleted that hinted that fin, that he was working on a Finn book. Right. He leaked it. At least I kind of read the tea leaves between the lines. And he said this was the end of November. I remember because we were Nisa and I were at a resort in Rayong. And that was uh, the first time I you know met my mother in law and, and whatnot. And that was in November last year. And, uh, he, he, you know, he was like, congratulations, John, and this and that, John Boyega. And I like, kind of figured out, I was like, wait a minute, Finn is force sensitive. Finn's got the force in the Rise of Skywalker, right? So I spent the whole, most of the time in the Rise of Skywalker waiting for confirmation. This dude said Finn has the force. I've been saying Finn has the force. When are they going to let it? Oh, okay, there it is. Before, you know, Finn, I got something to tell Ray. Well, Poe, it's something, you know, I, I can, I, I, I need to talk to Ray and I'm sorry, but the only other person who would understand is Leia. Ding, ding. Finn's got the force, right? So as far as I'm concerned, Finn is Kyle Katarn. So Kyle Katarn not showing up. He's not canon, right? Now this one, the wisest Jedi, Apo Rensisis. This guy is interesting. I mean, he looks like a, he looks like something reject from the Muppets. I won't say a region, but he looks like something that would be in the Muppets movie, right? Which, uh, you know, yeah, I know the relation to Jim Henson and the puppets in Star Wars, but this dude literally looks like something that would be in the Muppets. Uh, but this is interesting because Rancis is trained under Yaddle. Yaddle was his Jedi master, right? So that would be interesting because he's got experience with that species. Um, now we hop over here to Wikipedia real quick i'm i'm getting ready to bring it home uh, i wanted to see who were the known survivors because there was a list of known survivors of order 66 in the darth vader uh comic book but i'm not trying to translate that from uh uh whatever the little script is in star wars i'm not doing it right that's i'm not that guy right? I'm, i know alex star wars explained did a video on it um, but I, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to watch a whole YouTube video to come on here and, and go off the dome. I just, I, I just go to Wikipedia. What's, what's nice and quick. Now, Kerrigan followed Vader killed him to get his lightsaber. Uh, I don't know who some of these people are, but some of these people are, you know, by the time we get to the Mandalorian, they're dead. Vader hunted down Jocasta new. Now, if you ask me, I know some people think Jocasta new was a person that stashed away, uh, BGZ. Right. Uh, because Jocasta knew the Jedi librarian, she wasn't there. She survived order 66. And then they were looking for her because Palpatine needed access to the Jedi orders archives. Right. The the upper we find out that there was all kind of secrets and stuff stashed away in the archives in the upper levels of the library. And, you know, they made it more interesting because uh, the Grand Inquisitor. One of the things that turned him to the dark side was Jocasta News, like you're a dumbass. And she wouldn't she wouldn't let him check out, you know, some of the books and she wouldn't let him read some of the books in the the upper levels of uh, of the Jedi archives. And, you know, and he was like, well, now I can read whatever I want. Right. She was like, you're too much of a brute. You're she, she literally called him a dumbass. Right. Caleb Doom, Kane and Jairus, you know, he met his end. It was kind of sad. Some of these people, I don't know who they are, though, which is interesting. So if you look at this list, there's a huge there's a list of individuals who survived Order 66 and then they could have taken on other students while they were in exile. Right. We, we just don't know. So my thing is, there's there are a lot of possibilities for jedi to have shown up there could even be jedi who aren't on this list right if there were ten thousand a hundred thousand jedi knights before the purge and then of course those numbers got cut down because of the clone wars people defected like ahsoka wasn't the only person to leave the order um uh, we saw in the vader book that there were jedi knights that survived and they were in hot in hiding and then the inquisitors if there were inquisitors out there hunting for surviving jedi and then force sensitive children 
that kind of tells me that there there were enough that Palpatine basically needed to create, you know, I don't want to say a small army, but he needed a special branch outside the Imperial military to deal with this issue of surviving Jedi and hunting down force sensitive children uh, because he wanted he basically was trying to create like this prophets of the dark side. Right. He wanted you know, children who could see the force and detect threats before, which is something that that was in Legends uh, that Palpatine was trying to do is he had these different levels of the Imperial military that was all made up of force sensitive people where uh, that's where the Emperor's hand came from. Uh, you know, the Jedi spies that, you know, like uh, Mara Jade. Uh, so it sounds like they put that back in the story that Palpatine was trying to do that but and why didn't it happen in the movies well because the Inquisitors kind of sucked and they all got killed off and and then well what happened to the children that they did they did manage to uh to to stick somewhere well the Inquisitorious uh rebels got rid of that um literally like Ezra and Alam showed up to to save uh Zara Leonis' sister Dara, and they, you know, got rid of the uh, Inquisitorius on Arcanus. And then I think there was another, uh, not not the Inquisitor, not the Inquisitorius. That was, or, you know, it could have been the Inquisitorius because Cal Kestis. I haven't played the game right, uh, Fallen Order, but I thought Cal Kestis did something on the Inquisitorius, and it was on a different planet. Right. So if he showed up, then, oh, well, we got to move this other one to Arcanus and uh, and and continue with this other project that the emperor's got new plans and that got foiled. So, like, there's so much story that, like I keep saying in within the because the Filoni verse is mostly dealing with all of this. Right. And then these books that are built that support the Filoni verse, what Dave Filoni, the story that he's, he's telling, right. It's operating in parallel with the movies. Right. And so when I say, look, man, I think this is building up. This is how they're going to save the sequel saga. People are th- thinking I'm talking literally like, Oh, Dave Filoni is going to tinker and fix the sequel saga. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Dave Filoni, the same way, you know why people appreciate the prequels now because of the clone wars right because of rebels right those stories that ongoing this is all happening on a timeline what else is happening as a result of these stories that we originally knew right if please believe me everybody's like oh we need a we need an animated series with luke skywalker and his and his new jedi academy Jedi Academy is that's legend stuff. Luke had a Jedi order, right? What did he say? I was starting. Uh, he said he started temple, right? He, he started a new order, right? So please believe me. If, if we got that story, we got something dealing with young, Ky, young Ben Solo that really showed us Palpatine's influence on him. That would that would make people look at the sequel saga a different way. So people, Oh, I'll never look at the sequel saga different. It always sucks. Hey man, if you're saying that, if you say that you're lying, right? You are a liar. I'm telling you right now. Why? I mean, first off, you're, you're saying that, that nothing ever changes. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes. Are you, are you kidding me? Right? What is, what is the first, what is one of the first things that the Buddha teaches, right? That, Everything is always in a state of change. Do you still suck your thumb the same way you did when you were a baby? And if you do, hey, man, you need to grow up, right? Your your thumb is not the same thumb because you probably worn away the skin and your teeth are probably all jacked up, right? If, you, if you're an adult still sucking your thumb, right? Your your cells reach every seven years. Your, you, none of your cells are the same, Right. Because everything is constantly in a state of motion, a state of flux. As this story expands and we get more and more around it to flesh the story out, to make us see things from a different point of view, it's going to change the way you look at the story. If you hated the prequels uh, 10 years ago, 12 years, 15 years ago, right? Yeah, they wrapped up 2005, maybe even, you know, 
before we got all of the Clone Wars. You might have hated the prequels up until we got season seven of the Clone. But now, right, I said I haven't watched season seven of the Clone Wars because we were in lockdown. I hurt my back. I was locked down with family here in a studio apartment, right? A lot of stuff going on. So I didn't see it. I didn't have time, right? And not everybody in my family over here speaks English. And I didn't want to watch, you know, some of them are Star Wars fans. I didn't want to watch the Clone Wars. And then, oh, can we watch it in Thai? No, we only have it in English. And technically, uh, Disney Plus isn't even available in Thailand. So there's no Thai dub. There's no Thai translations. I'd have to go and find it on you know some bootleg website and, and hope that there's a tie dub that's the only way you know some of my family members over here could see it so i was like you know what? i'm just not gonna watch it right until till i can sit down and enjoy it you know myself and if i have to take a loss you know talking about that stuff that's related to that on youtube oh well right at the time i wasn't making videos anyway because i was busy with five other projects um, which is why I hadn't made a lot of videos in 2020 until now. Um, but season seven, seeing that story of Ahsoka, just like what Star Wars Rebels started, Star Wars, everybody thought Star Wars Rebels sucked. Even Charlie at Emergency Awesome. One of the reasons I started covering Rebels was because Charlie, what he watched like three episodes in season one. And he was like, I'm not covering this. I no, nope, no, nope, I can't. I can't do it. And I stuck with it. I was like, well, Charlie's not watching it. Where am I going to get my Star Wars breakdowns? And I started talking about it on my Facebook page. Right. And then the minute Ahsoka came down that ladder, well, I was like, everybody's going to be watching Star Wars Rebels now. Everybody told me it sucked. Right. I had friends that I was playing SWOTOR with in my little guild, my gaming group that I'd been playing with since City of Heroes. Right. So that's that's the hot, taking it back a hot minute. Right. And they were like, nope, Rebel sucks. So I'm not watching it. And I remember when we got to season four. Those same people were all about Star Wars Rebels. Right. So nothing is for certain. Nothing lasts forever. Everything is always in a constant state of change. Right. Just like everybody. Oh, it's got to be Luke Skywalker. Luke's got to show up to train Grogu. Well, we know we kind of know what Luke's story is, but there's other Jedi out there. There could be somebody completely new just flown under the radar that could and, and, and everything, you know, and, and then they say, well, how come we didn't know about this person? Uh, that's exactly why, because now we can give you somebody new and we can give you, we can, we can give you this whole story, this whole narrative that explains exactly why you never knew about them. Just like you never knew that Grogu, uh, somebody hid him away during order 66 when Anakin's running around, Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. What are we to do? Right. And Grogu's, you know, getting carted off somewhere, um, so that. You know, when all when all is said and done, you know, what some 20, 30, 30 years later, you know, here here he is, you know, he's sleeping, and he wakes up and he's the cutest thing ever. And nobody can stop talking about him, you know, for a year now. Right. Except for when he eats frog, even when he eats frog eggs and he does something bad. People are still talking about him. He, he's he's become the conversation. Right. How important is Grogu to the future of Star Wars? They made him demonstrate force healing before the rise of Skywalker. So when you saw Ray force healing, it's like, oh, yeah, we, we just saw that. So Jedi can do that. Awesome. Right. They literally had Grogu introduce force healing. Yeah, I know. Well, Obi-Wan did it to Luke. Uh, we can say that we don't really know. Maybe he just revived Luke or something. We don't, don't know. But as far as we know, Grogu healed a wound, right? A physical wound that you could see on uh, grief Karga. And then Ray does the same thing, you know, twice. And then Kylo Ren does it back to her and he dies, you know, as a result. So, you know, it's, I, I feel like, the story of this kid is going to be important and uh you could tell cuz cuz he's going to he's probably going to live a long time right by the time you get to ray and and finn and everything else he's going he, he's going to be like 75 right i did the math in my sleep i think it was 75 something like that he's 50 now or what like 
oh, five years, so 28 years. Well, no, this is 30 years. So it's like 25 years uh, until the Force Awakens. If he's 50, yeah, 75. If he's about 50 now, he'd be 75 when the Force Awakens kicks in, right? Let's give him another five years before he finds Ray and Finn in them. He's 80. He's still, Yoda didn't become a Jedi Knight until he was 100. So this kid would have 20 years to train with somebody as a Padawan before he was a Knight, right? Or they just, you know, trial by fire, whatever. But through this kid, now you can go on his adventures and have him somewhere he's he's somewhere else maybe Ezra shows up later like Ahsoka's like yeah um there's this there's this uh baby who's like Yoda you know Yoda yeah I know Yoda and people would be like wait a minute what about Yaddle what about you well Ezra Bridger really didn't know Yaddle he didn't even he didn't know shit about the Jedi Temple right he 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 talked to Yoda in the world between worlds a few times and and that, that as far as he's concerned, that's it. Right. He, and he looks he's like, holy shit, Ahsoka, it's a baby Yoda. Right. Because I would fully expect Ezra to do something like that. Right. <laughs> and uh, and then whoever, whoever he finds him. Right. They're off the map. They're laying low. And then it's like, yo, maybe this is the time to step out. And then you can you can follow the adventures of the child. And have this story running in parallel this is this is what we know happened with the Skywalkers. But this is this story about this kid who's going to be the next Yoda, the next the next great grandmaster. Right. Who's lived this interesting life where he had a he had a, a, a father who was a Mandalorian, who's a sworn enemy of the Jedi. And he, he got to experience life as a Mandalorian and 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 played a part in the Mandalorian, the restoration of Mandalore, if that's where they go with the story. And he knew Bo-Katan Kreese. And then uh, the, the Empire tried to use his blood to make clone, like force sensitive clone troopers. And uh, and and so he kind of knows something about, you know, the, the dark side Sith science and, and what Palpatine was doing. And because he knows about that, he lived through some of that he he knows like maybe how to stop it from happening again if there's some sith cultists out there who are like oh yeah we're gonna try to resurrect palpatine or make a new palpatine or make some kind of sith monsters or something right so there's just some interesting stuff that they could do with this dude but anyway y'all i i know some of y'all are loving this just me no notes no script no nothing just flowing off the dome i'm enjoying it but I got to make these videos shorter, right? I didn't even realize I've been talking this long. I was like, I'm trying to keep this to 20 minutes, but the whole me geeking out on Kung Fu and stuff. <laughs> I was talking about Kung Fu for a good 10, 15 minutes, right? And Taoist Immortals, because that's, I mean, that's, that's my passion, right? That, uh, that stuff made me appreciate Star Wars more, right? Learning uh, the martial arts and all about Qigong, just Qui-Gon's name comes from Qigong, right? Uh, my friend who studied with a, 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 a actual like Taoist, like temple trained Taoist, uh, when he started introducing all of that stuff to me, he was like, you know, you like Star Wars, don't you? Oh, well, let me use Star Wars to help you understand like the real thing. And when I'm done, you're going to wonder if George Lucas took all of these stories and just kind of. I'm gonna just take these stories and just change the names and put them in outer space. And instead of having scholar swords, Tai Chi swords, they got lightsabers. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, right? I'm gonna mix some samurai stuff in it because I like Kurosawa and those old black and white samurai movies, right? Because that'll help me as far as uh, creating a visual narrative. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I'm doing. Yeah, right. So. As he starts teaching me about this stuff and then I just doing my own research, and my own studies. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, man. There's like this is this makes me look at Star Wars a different way on a different level. So not just geeking out about Star Wars. It's like, I mean, I can process this and think about it. And then when I'm doing my own training, then I can go back and when I want to chill, look at Star Wars like this is what I'm this is what kind of this is a fantasy version of what we're doing this work for right like i was at a 
my ninjutsu lineage, right? I'm hanging out with uh, with them and for a seminar a workshop at um, at the Iron Tamer Dave Whitley's place in, uh, in back when he was in Brentwood. I don't know if he still runs a gym anymore. I think he's mostly doing online stuff. But shout out to the Iron Tamer. Miss you, Uncle Tamer. Um, but uh, at the end of the workshop, uh, uh, Rob was like, uh, you know, I really love doing these workshops and getting together with friends with training friends because it's almost like I'm hanging out with my friends doing what I love. And we're like doing Jedi stuff all weekend. And I was like, that guy gets it. He gets it right. It's not, Oh, I'm going to run around with a lightsaber and be a Jedi and, and talk the Jedi code. It's like, yo, we like star Wars, right? We're geeks and we like to train. And when we train, you know, it was like, I had a friend uh, in the Navy and he was, he, he boxed, when he was in high school, right? And so he watched Rocky and he Rocky was like his hero. Like he would he would really get into Rocky where I was like, I don't know, I don't know if this dude's gonna like swing on somebody and knock him out. But he loved Rocky movies, right? He loved Sylvester Stallone. And when he'd watch a Rocky movie, that just made him want to get up and just start skipping rope and training around the ship and you know what I'm saying? Uh and that that like the, this thing that he was doing in the real world that he loved to do, he loved to train like a boxer. And, and he at one point wanted to be a boxer. But then I think his family was like, yo, man, you don't need to get hit in the head because you're already crazy enough. Right. He's a good dude now. Shout out to Tabit. Uh, but, uh, you know, they were kind of worried. <laughs> you you kind of you, you got that big Minnesota farm boy strength. We don't want you getting hit in the head and flipping out, you know, because you might be a problem for somebody right so i think his family persuaded him forget about boxing go in the military preserve your mind and uh now he's out and he's doing a lot of good work for to help veterans in florida got the hell up out of minnesota and i can't say him i don't blame him <laughs> sorry y'all but your boy i mean i'm in thailand so i obviously don't like cold weather right but uh that's that's really it man uh, I like Star Wars because it makes me want to train, do my Kung Fu, do my meditation, do my Qigong, train the body, train the mind. And when you do those, when those are healthy, then you can start to train the spirit. A whole lot of people, and some, I'm, I'm throw some shade at some of y'all, right? Prince, you're only talking about your subscribers. I really haven't, but this time I really am. Some of y'all, y'all want to work on the energy and the spirit and all of that. And you don't want to work on your body, right? Why do we have Shaolin Kung Fu? The legend is that Bodhidharma went to Shaolin Temple uh, from India, right? Damo. And he was like, y'all are out of shape. Y'all are fat. Y'all, you can't meditate without falling asleep, right? You have weak bodies. You have a weak body. You have a weak mind. And so, you know, he taught them the 18 Lohan hands. This is the legend, right? taught them the 18 Lohan hands so that they could get in shape so they could, because if you have a strong body, you have a strong mind, right? You, you train your body to be able to pay attention longer. And that attention makes you have the ability to concentrate longer, right? We talk about meditation. We say, we well, you aren't thinking, you aren't thinking about anything. You're not thinking about thoughts. You're observing thoughts. But when you get to the higher level stuff, there is some concentration involved. And if you can't concentrate, if you can't hold your attention, you might as well forget it. Right. When you can enter a state of samadhi where it's like almost a death like state. Right. Well, first, you've got to have. Uh, uh, what's the word uh, you you've got to have my grandma calls it stick to it. Uh, and I can't think of what the actual word is, but you got to have the stick to it to train, to be able to get to that point. Right. you got to be able to, you know, basically be able to what it Damo Bodhidharma sat and stared at, a, a you know, the walls in a cave. Right. He the, the drawings is he cut his eyelids off so that he could hold his his attention. And, and so nothing would distract him, even if he, he was like, I don't I don't even want to blink. Right. So that's why I have the big bulging eyeballs. If you've ever seen a. Uh, painting of Bodhidharma or Damo, same person. Uh, apparently, Jake Mace doesn't know that Bodhidharma and Damo are the same person, but <laughs> there's a lot of things Jake Mace doesn't know. So, you know, shout out to Jake Mace. Jake Mace is Kung Fu and Tai Chi. 
right? But uh, if you can't if you can't hold your attention, you can't hold that focus, and you might as well forget it. And you know, the best way to learn how to do that: train the body, train the mind, and then you can start to train the spirit. Then you can start to understand the ways of the force. You know, somebody was telling me, oh, chi and she and shin are the same thing. They spell shin wrong. And I'm like, well, you're trying to convince me that what I'm saying is wrong. But you don't even sound like you know what you're talking about. Right. Building up your chi. Right. Because there was a video about I think I said the force is not really chi. It's actually shin. Shin is spirit. Right. You you take jing, you convert jing to chi and then convert chi to shin, to shin. Right. It's earth earth man heaven you'll see that a lot right uh i had i've been playing final fantasy 14 and if you guys play that like the ninja mudras or earth man heaven i don't remember the japanese words that's Taoism, man that's and apparently it's in some uh why am i losing my words i don't know a lot of japanese stuff though because that's just not my thing uh but like uh I think it's Shinto practices or I don't know my uh, this, uh, Lama that I follow the black Tibetan Lama ordained black Tibetan Lama posted an article about ninjutsu was actually a lot of the ninjutsu stuff is actually from esoteric branches of Buddhism. So there's always overlap, man. It's always overlap. And that's what makes it really interesting. And then you start talking, well, these Jedi or these ninja were like Jedi. There's ninja Jedi out there, right? That were doing this earth man heaven thing, this Jing Chi Shin, right? And if you want to convert Jing to Chi, you've got to train your body. You've got to have a strong body, right? Jing is essence. Chi, Chi is from your food. It's from the air you breathe. Uh, there's Chi in the blood. There's blood, like a kind of blood Chi. There's a kind of guardian Chi, which is like, uh, the chi of your, your, uh, you know, white blood cells or whatever, your immune system. There's a type of chi that's in tea, right? The, the, the better, the better quality the tea is, right? Like if you're drinking Lipton's, then it's not good chi, right? But we went up to, uh, to Chiang Rai where all the, the green tea farms are in Thailand, where all the green tea is grown. And we got it right from the, from the, the fields, right? I, I want to say the plantations, cause that's what they are. But, uh, in America, you say plantations, people think of something different, right? No slaves up there in, in Chiang Rai, unless they, you know, got some people they bring in across the border illegally from Laos and, and Myanmar, but I don't know anything about that. So, we're not going to go there. Plus, I get in trouble if I say something like that with uh, the Thai government. And I'm sorry, self-elevation, but um, I'm not in America. So if I run afoul of the Thai government, they kick my ass out. So if you don't want to wear a mask in America, you do you, homie. But uh, please don't come on my videos preaching about uh, not wearing masks and it's controlled by the government and this and that, because um some of my mods on the other channel who live here in Thailand will block you and uh, and and I might not unblock you because you're, you're going to get me in trouble. And uh, I have a wife and a family here to look after and they would not they would not appreciate that. Right. Um, you know, so just a warning that goes for anybody else. If you all go on my other channel and you say something bad about the Thai king, the Thai government, you're getting blocked and. And that that'll be permanent and it might happen on my, any other channel I have too, right? Cause you're, you know, your first amendment rights cover you in America. They don't cover you everywhere else. And yes, YouTube is not America, but I don't know who might be looking at my YouTube channels. And if they see something, they're like, Oh, he agrees with that. That can get me in trouble. Right. And, uh, and you know, if I were from another country is no telling or me being a veteran, an American veteran, uh, you know, as Nisa says, they don't want trouble with Donald Trump. So they just kick me out. Right. And I'm in, I'm not trying to get kicked out of paradise. Right. Uh, the, the, the only story I want to see about somebody getting kicked out of paradise is the garden of Eden narrative. And that's about it. Um, but, uh, yo man, I have like geeked out about Jedi and, 
training mysticism, Eastern mysticism. Niger, I'm pretty sure you love that. Uh, shout out to you, homie. I hope everything's going great in the, in the yay area. Yay area. Yay area. I like, I love, the, I love the Bay area. Uh, it's a great place to be. Uh, you know, if I had to go back to America, I would, I would go back to California, Florida, Texas, or Arizona, right? Texas, cause it's warm. I don't think there's state taxes in Texas, Florida, cause it's warm. Arizona, cause I got family there and it's warm, but that pretty much either leaves Phoenix or Tucson. Um, cause when you start getting up Flagstaff area, it starts getting cold. Uh, and then Cali, Cali, baby, the yay area, San Diego, SoCal. I, I don't think I could do Los Angeles, Los Angeles is too much. So the Bay area, Sacto from Sacto and back down the Sacto and the Bay area back down. What is it? California does how to party, right? But I was stationed in San Diego. I think, uh, him it, I would probably go to him it, which isn't far from Palm Springs, 21 Palms. I got, I got people in, in, in him it. I'd probably go to him. it be like a hour or 90 minutes from LA. I wouldn't have much competition with uh, the Kung Fu stuff. And it'd be uh, about a four, four hour drive from Phoenix. I don't so I know, I know I got some jar heads on here. Uh, shout out to Mark, um, who know about how far uh, 21 Palms is from, uh, from Phoenix. I got, you know, my homie, Seafood Ash Higgs, my big bro, uh, Ash, check out his channel. If, uh, actually Ash has started a new channel on like keto dieting and weight loss. And I don't know if he's talking about Kung Fu on it. He should, a Kung Fu keto channel would be something great. And his Kung Fu is not like anything on YouTube, right? Nobody, nobody's really a, a, talking about Ely Chin on YouTube. Um, not really. There's not a lot of information out there on, uh, Ely Chin, unless you speak Russian, right? All the Dasha stuff and Dasha's excellent. Dasha's like one of the best, uh, but her stuff is in Russian, right? So unless you speak Russian, there's not really a lot on, a lot on Ely Chin and you're not going to learn it from YouTube. Um, when I start covering, uh, talking about my Ely Chin training on my other channel. Uh, I, you're not going to learn it from me on YouTube. Cause I'm just going to say, yeah, I practice today and have like a montage training video. And that's about it. And I might talk about the philosophy, but you know, knowing the philosophy from hearing somebody talk about it and knowing it from doing it are uh, two different things. Um, you know, maybe uh, I know they're, doing the online learning thing and uh i'm hoping to get in the training portal to uh become an instructor and and offer that but that's gonna be a long way off um it's gonna be a few years off uh once one once they launch the program and then for me to get through it like i'm thinking three to four years off so hopefully i i'm i got it on and popping on youtube like for me, and I'm going to end on this one for me, my whole goal, like I don't, I know, you know, like star Wars theory, stupendous wave. Those guys might be YouTube millionaires at this point. If they have, if their CPM is as high as mine is right. What they're following. If I had their numbers that they were doing, I don't know about now. Cause I don't, I'm not tracking anybody's anything, um, in, in star Wars. I'm looking at other channels that pertain more to uh, the business, the, the business side of things that I'm doing. This is more kind of at this point, I'm trying to really just do this for fun um, and to let people know, hey, man, there's a dude out here talking about Star Wars. He likes Kung Fu and meditation and religion stuff. And uh, and really, I'm doing this to kind of hook y'all into getting more interested in 
it doesn't have to be with me, but in doing martial arts and getting into fitness and taking up a meditation practice. I'm going to just be real. That's what I do. What I do. I don't know why Doomcock makes the videos he makes. I know Jeremy Geeks and Gamers is Breitbart for geeks. And I'm and I said that before. People think I'm joking. Um, there's a book on Steve Bannon uh, that somebody wrote like Steve Bannon's relationship with Donald Trump. I started the book a few months ago, and put it down. I haven't picked it back up. But like you got Gamers Gate, uh, you got Comics Gate, who was one of the big people pushing Comics Gate, Ethan Van bitch ass. Right. And he's right there. Buddy, buddy, you know, fuck buddies with Jeremy. Right. Um, you know, meaning they both fuck boys. Uh, and you know, when Jeremy said something to me bragging about his channel, he was like, Oh, geeks and gamers, we're a, we're a media company and we're do this, this and that. And I was like, I don't give a fuck what you are. You're a fuck boy. As far as I'm in my world, you know, good luck with whatever you do. Don't, don't, don't talk shit about me because you don't want to see me in the real world. Right. Because you know, all that shit. I was like, I said, I remember what I said to him as I was in my garage. I was like, all his YouTube shit, it, it'll go right out the window, man. I, you know, <laughs> we can both go to jail as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> One of us is going to be the bitch and it's not going to be me. Right. And, uh, and he, and, you know, and then, you know, I had to deal with the fandom. Oh, see, he's got to turn to violence. And I'm like, well, look what y'all do. Y'all been sending me death threats. Y'all been calling me all kind of stuff. And when I say, hey, you, you want to call me a soy boy? Come fuck around and find out. Right. Hey, because at the time I was vegan. I was like, I'm eating a lot of soy and I'm lifting a lot of kettlebells. I'm doing a lot of training. Fuck around and find out how soft I am. Right. <laughs> fuck around and find out. Right. Uh, and he said that that stuck with me. I was like, what does he mean? They're a media company. And then first thing I'm like, this is a team, right? I'm a one man show. I'm, I got my camera, my lights. I don't have anybody editing. I don't have a ghost writer. I don't have anything. I don't have an outreach person. Uh, I, I don't have people out there shopping around for, for, uh, 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 sponsored deals none of that i'm just a dude talking in front of the camera even when the videos are scripted i've never had a ghost writer i had to learn everything on my own one man show completely right uh but then i was like well what, what, what does he mean and then i'm reading about like because i'd he heard comics gate gamers gate thrown around and I didn't know anything. I didn't really know much about Breitbart other than it was something that I didn't obviously wasn't going to listen to. Um, so I was like, well, what is all of this? What, what are they talking about? What What is this? And then it, it's like, we're a media company. And I'm like, oh, Ethan Van, who gives a what, is is pushing this comics gate thing. And what what is this thing about? And as I'm reading this book a few months ago, Bing, bing, the light goes off because I said, oh, yeah, man, they're like they've taken the Fox News model. I'm like, no, I was actually wrong. Right. The fandom menace people came on and jumped. They were like, you're wrong. No, that's not. They were right. They were right. It's not Fox News. It's Breitbart. Right. What is this comics gate? This gamers gate thing? It's a uh, feminism is encroaching on american values on family values right the women the minorities they're pushing this agenda in our face the liberal agenda is bad right it's it's the erosion of of, of sound american values all these things that steve bannon believes right and then he said well if i get this in a pop culture right if i get the geeks talking about it the gamers talking about it then i i can I can pull them. I can spread my philosophy to all these people. So when I bring up this guy that I've chosen because he, he planned this out like years in advance, I need a guy, right? I, I need a guy. I'm going to be the guy behind the guy, right? He's basically Darth Plagueis. Steve Bannon is fucking Darth Plagueis, right? Darth Plagueis in, in, in legends, Darth Plagueis was like, I want to be the emperor and the Sith are going to rule the galaxy. I need to find me a good politician who is also force sensitive, right? Who can be my, my, the emperor, the face, 
but I'm the one calling all the shots from behind the scenes. And then, you know, and then I can do all my experiments and become immortal and share them with my apprentice and we'll both be immortal, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man. Right. And Palpatine was like, yo, no player. <laughs> I'm smarter than you. Right. When you go to sleep, I'm going to kill you. And uh, and I'm going to be the man. and It's going to be me and me alone. And then I'm going to get the, the chosen one. That way, nobody can can oppose me. Right. Nobody's going to be able to take me down. Right. Steve Bannon, he's like, yo, man, I. I can't be president, but I want to put somebody I want to find the perfect person. Indoctrinate them. They're going to be my spokes, but basically Aaron and Moses, and I know if you watch the Ten Commandments, you're like, oh, what the fuck you mean, Aaron? But Moses was the prophet, but Moses was like, oh, I uh I can't I can't speak to the people. I stutter. I got a stuttering problem. I, I'm not good making speeches and you know, and uh Hashem was like, Aaron can talk your brother Aaron can talk. You you tell him what to say. Put that motherfucker up there. You're not getting out of this, Moses. Moshe Moshe Moshe. Right. I know, Amanda, you're probably the time I tell the truth about what the Bible actually says. Amanda Chidiak gets mad at me. But hey, Amanda, read the Bible, like read it line by line, summarize every everything in. uh, uh, uh What is that in Exodus? It might have came after Exodus uh, in the Torah. Go through the whole Torah, read every chapter, summarize. It goes for any of the rest of y'all who get mad when. I talk about Bible stuff. You know, I'm telling you why. You know why I'm telling you to do that? That's what I had to do in seminary. And I had to do it in undergrad, too. But I don't think I had to do the Torah. I think I just had to do certain books of the New Testament. Oh, I had to do it in Re- for Revelation. The book of Revelation. That sucked. I had to summarize every chapter based on what I thought it said when I was like 20. And I was like, yo, I heard I grew up hearing all this evangelical stuff. Where my mom speaking in tongues and got me in Kenneth Copeland and Eddie Long's church. And, and now I'm trying to like and, and playing TBN and all these people talk about Jack Van Impey, all these mofos talking about the end of the world is coming in the year 2000 and 2000 and what my junior year in college. That was 2000. So why 2K came and left and nothing happened. Um, and uh, and now I'm sitting here like going through the book of Revelation. Like, this is crazy, man. I don't know what this stuff is, but these people who come off on TV and in these churches telling me what it says, I don't think I could trust them. I don't think I could believe none of that shit they saying. Right. So. uh, So I, you know, I I had to do that, man. You you start to learn some things and you start to kind of wonder about what some of the people who've been telling you things your whole life about the Bible, if they actually know what the hell they're talking about. But that's just me. Right. That's what I had to do. That's my experience. Right. Um, but uh, back to this, this Breitbart thing. So these different gate conspiracies, it was all like the whole thing that they the narrative they push is these things are undermining family values. Well, what are family values? Well, they define what family values are. Right. Steve Bannon grew up, you know uh upper middle class or middle class upbringing in the northeast uh, going to a catholic school very uh i was starting to say very waspy upbringing but he but that's white anglo-saxon protestant and he was not he kind of had this irish upbringing with the catholic school all the guys who went to that same school from that same neighborhood they kind of had to have the same American values of what their America is. Right. So this is so he needed the perfect spokesperson to do this. And oh, Donald Trump got humiliated by Barack Obama and Donald Trump is behind the birtherism thing. And Donald Trump is doing all this stuff, you know, run for said, I'm going to run for president. And every time he get ready to do it, he, all right, now I'm getting free publicity. Oh, I got this new business venture. Oh, watch my new season of The Apprentice, right? So Steve Bannon's like, yo, why don't Donnie, boy, come holler at me. You know, you know how to really get back at Obama when he when he's no longer president. You be the ne- you will be the next Amer- uh, American president, next president of America, of the USA. Right. 
how better to get back at him the way he humiliated you here. And I'm going to give you all the talking points. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to say. And so that was his that was his stooge. Right. So what happens when you've got these people that are spouting this philosophy, this ideology that Bannon has been putting out in Breitbart and Breitbart talks about pop culture. That's why I got on uh, Ben. uh, What's bitch ass Ben's name? He just moved to Nashville. Right. Uh, And I remember I said I had a video about him talking about Black Panther and I was like, and I say, you Breitbart bitches and people are like, oh, you dumbass. He's not even with Breitbart. And I'm like, I'm not talking about Ben. I'm talking about you. You the person who's defending him because you're a Breitbart bitch. Right. Um, and if any of you Breitbart bitches are watching the video and you feel some kind of way, deal with deal with it. Right. Um, because you still you still have that ideology. Ben still puts out that he might have left the organization Breitbart. But he's still pushing that that narrative, that philosophy. Right. Even if he's opposed to Trump. Bro, you you still you still are on the band and talking points. You're still on the band and the band and cop. Right. You're still riding it. <laughs> Steve, Steve, do you think you can give me a towel? Right. I've been I've been sucking on that wet P word. All right. So. I'm think I'm I'm reading this book and I'm like, wait a minute. Hillary Clinton is supposed to be the, the most hated politician in America, in the history of American politics. Look at look at Breitbart. Go back and look. Or it, well, it's not Hillary Clinton now. Now it's the progressives, right? The feminists. And then look at what these channels are saying about Kathleen Kennedy. You substitute Hillary Clinton with Kathleen Kennedy and and array or forced identity. Right. We're talking about, oh, we want we're we're in a a society where we want more, more inclusion. Right. Forced inclusion. Oh, they're playing identity politics with Star Wars. Who says that? Right. It's these identity politics and the force, the forced inclusion, uh, uh, the forced uh, diversity. Right. Dunkock and, and Jeremy sat there in, in Jeremy's car and and and, you know, jerked each other off off where where because you can't see their hands. Hail Dunkock. Hail Dunkock. You know, giving each other reach arounds and whatnot, fondling balls. And they're and they're just talking all this nonsense that they, the, the, you know, this Breitbart narrative and, uh, and people are, are just sucking it up. Right. Literally. Right. You tell your audience what you want to hear, what they want to hear. And, and, and you're pushing this, this narrative that, you know, this philosophical view. And so, you know, it's not cause I, I heard Jeremy loved uh, the Force Awakens. There's, and I've seen, a, I've seen screenshots of a video where he loved the Force Awakens, and then one day the Last Jedi comes out, and now he's, you know, the dude who looks like a bulldog who needs to take a shit. He looks like a constipated bulldog, right? You know, and uh, how do you go from that that guy to that guy? Right. Must be the money. Must be the money. Show chain me. Must be the money. Must be the money. Right. Found out there was some money in it. Some money in jumping on Comics Gate, Gamers Gate, Star Wars Gate. And then, you know, and, and, and some other people answered that rally cry. And now you got the fandom menace and you got people who don't know any better, who love it. And they, you know, lap up every word he has to say. And I'm just like, y'all are in doc getting indoctrinated into something you don't even maybe, you know, right? Like, you know, people were like, oh, man, how, how do these people love Trump? Not that many people love Trump. And then they got a rude awakening when they saw many votes Trump got in the election. No, I can't believe it. Like almost half of all American voters support the shit that Trump says support, you know, the Trump takeover of the Republican Party. Right there. There there are no no more true conservatives. 
They're not real patriots, right? That's I'm not. I'm just saying what other people have said. At this point, I don't care because, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really want to return to America unless it's for something that I'm getting paid to. You have to pay me to come back to America, right? I want to go back to sell the rest of my stuff, and then I'll come back if I'm getting paid to come back. <laughs> right? That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> closest I want to come to America is if I have to go to the embassy for something and that the, the U S embassy in Bangkok or in Chiang Mai, that's the, you're, you're on American property, right? Like, you know, even though it's in Thailand, you know, like my wife can't go in the embassy unless, uh, uh, unless it's like for, I'm sure there's certain exceptions or if I get her like citizenship, but she, what'd she say earlier? Nisa, what'd you say earlier? I was telling her I was reading an article about Biden. She was, I say, yeah, I'm reading, trying to read about Joe Biden. She's like, Joe, what joke? What joke are you talking about? I said, Joe Biden, he, he's, he's the next president after Trump. She's like, I don't give a fuck about Trump. I want you to stay in Thailand. So that's, a, that's her stance. She, she didn't give a fuck about Trump. I think she'd like to go to America to see it, uh, which is a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys that I know who have Thai wives here, they like, they don't want to go to America. Uh, they just want to go see the country, maybe taste like, taste a, a real American breakfast. Cause, uh, American breakfast in Thailand is not American breakfast. It's like some British shit. I think I saw American breakfast somewhere and it was like sausage, which are actually hot dogs. I was like, these aren't sausage. This isn't sausage. This is, these are hot dog. Yeah, I know a hot dog technically is a sausage, but in America, you say a sausage and, and you show somebody a hot dog. They're like, this ain't no sausage. This is a hot dog stuff. <laughs> Where's the real sausage? <laughs> and it was like eggs and like maybe bacon and baked beans and toast. I was like, we don't eat baked beans for breakfast. We taught that baked beans make you fart. It's like some British shit. I was like, who are these British motherfuckers over here telling people, telling Thai people what Americans eat? This ain't no damn American. Or, uh, I saw American fried rice and it was like fried, it was like fried rice with raisins in it. I was like, who the fuck eats raisins and fried rice in a minute? Now I have had fried rice that had raisins in it and it was dope, but it was like pineapple fried rice with, you know, like cashew, uh, cashews and pineapples and raisins and shrimp and then fish and other stuff in it right that was dope but just it was like fried rice with like diced carrots and raisins and this american fry i'm like which one of y'all's aunt karen been over here giving thai people her nasty ass recipe putting raisins and all kinds of kinds of unnecessary accoutrements in the fucking fried rice the fuck out of here man tell your aunt karen to stay the fuck out of thailand man <laughs> so yeah so she'd like to go to america to see what real american food is i i take her to crystals and say yeah let's go to crystals baby nisa you might need to you might need to be on the toilet for the rest of the day after you eat these crystals if you're not from the south you don't know nothing about crystals you might have heard a place called white castles uh, white castles is all right, but if you eat crystals, you might as well cancel your plans for the rest of the day. Uh, hopefully, you know, charge your phone up and, and, and make sure you got some good movies to watch on Netflix, get you some baby wipes. Cause you might not be leaving the bathroom. <laughs> them crystals, Keandre, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you like them crystals. I'm reading the comments later. Yeah, Mr. Bell, I like crystals. Keandre, you like crystals, dog? I'm going to be surprised if he's like, Mr. Bell, I don't like crystals. Maybe he ate some, had a bad bathroom experience. Keandre, does Depana like crystals? <laughs> he go text her, right? If I if I make this a live stream, y'all know, or premiere, y'all know I'm not live. I'm probably in the bed when y'all are watching this because, hey, man, your boy is getting old. I can't be staying up late, but... uh. I'm I'm gonna laugh if I come back later and see Keandre left something about crystals in the comments. <laughs> I miss you, big dog. Y'all y'all say y'all give a shout out to Keandre, man. I want to see uh everybody put big ups to Keandre in the comments. 
Say it in the in the live chat or in the comment section. Keandre is my dog, man. He was one of the best students that I had uh, during my short time as a teaching in Nashville. Uh, I might teach for a year over here just to to help me with my tie and uh, see how little tie kids act. I don't know. I, I miss being around kids. That's uh, that's what I really want to do. If I uh if I get a kung fu school going here. Be weird thing. A black dude from Nashville, Tennessee, moves to Asia to teach Kung Fu to uh, to Thai people. And if we're in Bangkok, I might be somewhere in that would even be crazy. I'm in Chinatown in Asia teaching Thai Chinese people Kung Fu. How what how weird would that be? That would be crazy. Be crazy. Dream come true, though. That, that's that's one of the things that I really would like to do. The Jedi Master returning my my flavor of Jediism to the people who started it. Right. Actually, my Kung Fu comes from Malaysia, um, but Malaysia ain't far. Hey, we Nisa and I got a video coming out on the other channel. My name is Prince from last year where we went to Malaysia. We hit the. uh the Batu Caves was a, a Hindu temple up in the mountain, right? We hit a Taoist temple. We went to something else, too. Actually, we took like this big tour when we first got there. And Nisa and I were both not feeling well. And uh, so there's a whole story there. So that other channel is going to be kind of vlog style storytelling. We'll get into training, martial arts, everything. Uh travel it's gonna be crazy right um i got a video that i've been trying to get out on there about like where i talk about tai chi and playing an mmo like the comparison was wild um so i really need to get that up but hey man i'm i'm really not i'm really not trying to be joe rogan but who knows maybe it could happen maybe it could be joe rogan of geek culture and just have these two hour long talks I need to have other people on eventually, though. It can't just be me all the time. Some of y'all might like that, but uh, one day I'll run out of shit to talk about or, or, or I'll start like telling the same stories. Hopefully I have some adventures where enough stuff where I won't ever run out of stuff to say or, uh, you know, I need to get further into. I need to pick this back up because uh, this is a heavy reading. If you. Some of y'all say, oh, man, I'm going to get back into the hero of the thousand faces or Prince. I'm going to start reading it. Um, the audible version is great, but it's like it's like 15 hours long. Um, I'm only doing like seven pages a day. But if you can see, I haven't this bookmark hasn't moved um, that much. So I haven't really been reading it. Maybe once I get moved, I'll get back through it. But I'm like, if I do seven pages a day in two months, I have the whole book read. Sometimes I stop and outline, underline stuff, take notes. Um, a lot of the stuff I outline, it's like, yo, man, that could be a topic for a video. That's going to be a bit much. Uh, what might actually happen is where since I'm doing these off the dome things. Maybe I'll look, find a passage. This is interesting um, and just go on it and come on here, flesh out my thoughts, share the passage and talk about like something related to star wars that i got from it and there's a lot here right i remember reading one when we were in bangkok back in august about like something about like the return to the original world or something like that i, I that, that's probably not what i read but i really can't remember i can tell you though that it made me think of luke going to Oct oh, the world naval yeah the world naval I read this and it made me think of Luke going to Arch Toe, right? And I was like, that could be a video. But man, trying to go that deep on stuff is it's like if I were given a lecture, I wouldn't have it all scripted. I would just have a few notes or I'd have the book and I just get in front of people and start talking and say, look, here's this and just go from there. Right. That's uh, that's the kind of public speaking I used to do. I just do it here on YouTube and. If it five minutes or an hour and two hours, you know, just 
if if people get some, take something from it, then that's that's, that's all I want to do. It's just give you all something to make you think deeper about this stuff. But hey, man. I really didn't mean to talk this long. I, I really only intended for this video to be 20 minutes long. Baby Yoda and these Jedi. With all that that I've said in this video, who do you guys want to see? You know what? It just hit me. I don't know how the audio would come out, but I was like, I should just record these straight to YouTube and then make it public, like premiere it. So it's like a lot because I, you know, like if it's a live stream, I get distracted by the chat because I've done that before. The only thing is the audio. I don't know how the audio would come out. Shoot. And the other way I'm thinking I would still because the way I'm recording it right now, I could do it that way technically, but I'd still have to go back and edit it to fix the audio. I'm going to have to think about that one, though, because yeah, I have to download it from YouTube and then sync the audio locally with YouTube's audio. I don't know. I'm, I'll figure something out. I just keep doing it the way I'm doing it. Uh, but that's so I can get the videos up faster. But with everything I've said, if you made it all the way to this point, what do you think about these Jedi? Right now, I'm kind of like... I would I would be OK with Din Jaren getting taking baby Yoda to Ty, or baby Grogu to Tython, be Jeezy. And because he's going to put out the call, right? If, 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 if Grogu reaches out with the force, you got to wait for it because Ahsoka said and maybe a Jedi will respond will return. Maybe that response doesn't come until season four. And then in the meantime, you've got these other adventures. There's other stuff going on. There's other other plot points, other things, whatever Moff Gideon's got going on, whatever the Empire's going on, maybe the First Order shows up, who knows, right? There's the Mandalorian, the restoration of Mandalore, all kinds of things. Boba Fett's supposed to be a big part of season three. What's the deal with that? Maybe there's like some big thing with uh, the Bounty Hunters Guild and, you know, there's, you know, something goes down with Ma with grief carga and Din Djarin, and that's the big story in season three. And we put this whole thing with Grogu and the Jedi on the back burner, like, okay, well you're stuck with me, kid. Um, but who, who do you, who do you want to see if there's a response to the call? Who do you, who would you say just based on what we talked about here? And if you say Luke Skywalker, you got to come with a reason that because I don't want it to be Luke, right? Like, OK, a Luke Skywalker cameo. Luke is like, oh, hey, yeah, I know somebody like you, um, but uh, I've got I've got something to do right now. And when I'm done, you know, if there's there's other force sensitive people out here, you know, maybe maybe he converts Din Jaren, who's this agnostic uh, when it comes to the force, maybe, you know, it's like maybe this is this journey is for you, too. That's where I, personally, that's where I would love to see the story go is like Din Jaren becomes kind of a force, a student of the force as well. And it's like, well, I want this for Grogu. And he's not going to do it unless I come along for the ride. And it's almost like I'm kind of your Jedi master, but I don't know anything about the Jedi. And so you're learning and I'm learning together and we're finding you. We're getting you to the point where you're ready to like LeVar Ball. Like if Din Djarin became LeVar Ball, like you're going pro. You're It's in your destiny. You're going to be a Jedi, Grogu. Kid, you're going to be a Jedi. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make that happen, even if it's us going out, finding all these Jedi temples and Jedi relics and everything else so that you can learn everything. So when the time comes for you to finally meet a master, you're going to be more than a, you're going to have all the tools right to turn pro, you know, to go from if I got to take you to Lithuania and then 
and then start my own league and then put you in Spire Academy and then send you to Australia so you can be the number three pick in the draft, you know, and, and play for the GOAT, MJ. That's what I'm going to do because because it's, it's triple B's, baby. It's all about these triple B's, right? <laughs> and that's where I'm going to leave it. This video, I, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I had fun doing it, but um, I kind of want to play some Final Fantasy 14 and uh, I got to do my kettlebell swings and uh, and then I don't know, watch a do some Netflix and chill with the wifey and, and call it a night. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Um, again, let me know your, let me know your thoughts. What, how do you want to see this play out with Grogu and these Jedi? So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be checking back to see what you all have to say. And, uh, that's all I got for this one. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and, uh, I'll say it for this one. May the force of others be with you always.